In this program, we'll look at selected disassembly and reassembly procedures related to the Model 210. There are three other programs in the Model 210 series. The first is an introduction to the Model 210 that is directed to all service department personnel. A second is directed to the technician and covers the 210 from a technical standpoint. And the third addresses the Model 210 with diesel engine and provides an overview of the new electronically controlled injection system and other modifications. In this program, each operation will be preceded by a numbered title on a blue background. This will help you when you fast forward to find a particular procedure that you want to review again. The following operations will be shown. Front door inner panel removal, rear door inner panel removal, side molding removal, door sill trim removal, center console and instrument panel removal, sliding roof removal, head restraints removal front and rear, headlamp housing removal, and mirror housing removal. In cases where there is an identical left and right side procedure, only one side of the disassembly procedure will normally be shown. Also, it must be emphasized that the procedures are shown in an abbreviated form and the necessary cautions are not included. Therefore, you must always refer to the appropriate service microfiche when performing any disassembly procedure. Removal of the front door inner panel is similar to previous models, with the exception of the location of a few fasteners that are clearly visible in the following footage. The power seat switch is removed from the inner side of the door panel. Be careful not to bend the holding tabs further than necessary to remove the switch. The switch surround is removed by depressing the outer tabs. The side airbag is mounted to the door with special rivets. If a side airbag deploys, it should not be necessary to replace the complete door panel. The section of the door panel covering the airbag is available separately and is attached with plastic fasteners. Removal of the rear door inner panel is also similar to previous models. Removing the side molding on the rear door begins with this screw above the bottom hinge. The front door molding is removed beginning with this screw.
He's alive. There are three other videos in the middle prison. Due to these. The rear seat must be removed to access a screw retaining the trim next to the door. Any procedure that requires disconnecting the battery begins here. Removing this cover in the footwell allows disconnecting the battery negative cable without having to remove the rear seat. Install the cover to ensure that the cable doesn't accidentally contact the battery terminal. The center console switches are designed as a complete assembly, eliminating all of the separate plug connectors. The cup holder simply lifts out. The center storage compartment is removed by depressing a retaining clip. The familiar radio removal keys apply to the Model 210 also. The radio removal keys are also used to remove the climate control push button unit.
Remove the speaker grill by pulling up and to the rear to avoid breaking the retaining clips. The wood trim is pried straight out at the outer end and then pulled to the right to remove. Keyhole slots and self-locking nuts are used to secure the trim on the inner end. Release the two retaining clips found inside the vent by lifting upward. Remove the screws for the airbag deployment panel straps. On reassembly, be sure that the straps are routed properly, as explained in the service microfiche. A retaining rail must be slid to the left to remove the lower dash cover. Here's a better look at the retaining rail. One word of caution, to prevent damage to the door seal, be sure that the seal is reinstalled before closing the door. Pull the A-pillar trim straight down to prevent breaking the headliner retaining clips or damaging the headliner.
Pulling the instrument cluster is the next operation, and the previous pulling hooks apply to the Model 210. Be sure that the pulling hooks engage the slots in the cluster housing to prevent damage to the cluster. Here's a good hint that would apply to all models. Before removing the instrument cluster using the pulling hooks, insert an old microfiche to protect the instrument panel. A mounting bracket secures the electrical connectors for the cables that are routed in the steering column jacket.
A new special tool is required for removing the ignition switch trim ring on the Model 210. The special tool for removing the ignition tumblers is the same tool that applies to Model 202. Remove the solar sensor in the center of the dash. This brace does not have to be totally removed. Unplug the speaker connections and remove the mounting screw on both sides. Here's a closer look at the locking pins for the ignition lock assembly. On model 210, the sliding interior panel does not have to be removed to remove the sliding roof.
slide the front of the tilt bracket out of the track and then slide the bracket forward until the sliding block can be lifted out of the track. Raise the tilt bracket to the point where the yellow bushing aligns with the relief cutout. If it's not in correct alignment, the retaining tab will be broken. Remove the cable retaining screws. Slide the rear section of the tilt bracket against the stop and push outward. The sliding blocks are a Teflon material and can be replaced separately. The tracks and blocks should not be lubricated. The access flap for the sliding roof cable can be completely removed by pulling it straight up in contrast to the Model 202 where the flap is hinged. The final step in the disassembly procedure is the removal of the cables. Checking the synchronization of the sliding roof motor to the position of the cables is accomplished as follows. Push both tilt brackets fully forward against the stops. That will lift the brackets to the roof raised position. With the motor still removed, hold the switch to the roof closed position until the motor stops running. Then push the switch to the roof raised position. The motor is now synchronized to the position of the cables. After the motor is installed, the tilt brackets are lowered to the roof closed position to confirm that the left and right cables are aligned equally. This is done by observing the relative position of the two parts of the tilt bracket at this point and then confirming that the tilt bracket on the other side is aligned the same. If the alignment is not the same, an error was made during the synchronizing process explained previously. For a better view, the height adjustment for the sliding roof is shown here with the roof removed and turned over. The specifications are unchanged. At the rear, the sliding roof should be one millimeter higher than the roof, and at the front, one millimeter lower. As a final point, it should be mentioned that the mounting of the interior sliding roof panel is modified, and the removal procedure is different. The forward trim strip is removed. With the sliding roof fully open, release the retaining clips and remove the panel. To remove the front seat head restraint, Run it up fully and pull straight up. Here's a look with the seat back panel removed. 
so that the locking inserts for the head restraints can be seen. Be careful not to damage the inserts when reinstalling the headrests. Removal of the headlamp housing begins with removing the lower trim panel. Other than the fact that the Model 210 uses a wire spring retainer to secure the mirror housing, the removal of the complete mirror assembly is the same as Model 202. This concludes the disassembly procedures that were the objective of this program. For these, and the many other procedures not covered here, remember to refer to the service microfiche covering body assembly jobs for Model 210.